All right, got a nice old present, three horsepower spindle with all this stuff. So let's open it up and see what it looks like. It's heavy, not itself is heavy. There's a lot of stuff in here, and a lot of stuff, or a little stuff that weighs a lot. Wrenches, bolts, collets, half inch and quarter inch. I also bought a set of the collet. I didn't buy it, it was a gift to my son in law. A set of collets. They're called ER20 collets and that's what size fits this. He got these for me a couple years ago. And obviously all the spindles I have are E11 collars. There's a box. Oh, more stuff. That's a collar. I'm gonna check that and see if it's the same size as the collar I have. Looks like it's the same. So I can get rid of the cardboard. Make a recycle pile. See what's in here. Do not change all settings are pre-programmed. So that must be the VFT drive. Variable frequency drive. Also known as VFD. Yep. It came, comes with a new control cable. The control cable actually controls the turning on and off. Yep. Yeah. And it's a four pin instead of a three pin, so that's different. Output three horsepower, 20 amps. So this is supposed to be on a sec separate circuit. This is the manual. We have more stuff. I don't know if you see there or not. I'm going to move these so they don't fall off. Take them over to the machine. Keep going. See what else is in here. Empty cardboard, recycle that. Another one, nothing in it, recycle that. Cat wall. All right. That's the spindle. i use my putty knife to cut the tape. So what? This spindle is heavy. A lot heavier than the other one. Looks like it's the same size diameter wise though, which isn't all bad. Let me get my Stanley knife, cut that. Take well. This thing is heavy. I bet it must weigh 10 or 20 pounds. But you can see the size of the unit. Okay? And you can see it's a 20 collet, which makes it big. And it's balanced, so you can see that. But it looks like it'll fit in the same spot, which is good. It has plugs in here, which the old ones did not. What else is there? There's one more box. It's out of the way over here. My suspicions were 
would be this is the cooling system. So that's the only thing we have not unwrapped. It's again packed well. That's the back of it. That's the power supply. This is a cooling box, complete with flow meter. Okay, this is where I'm going to place it. I'm going to put it in place of that unit. Just remove that spindle, put the new one on. Put, you notice I put my controller, because see this is a lathe, so I put my controller fixed on the side. And that's what I'm going to do with the other one. I'm going to put the controller here and the heat box here, right here. So I have to I've got some more of this stock material, so I'll um, cut a little longer piece that has the box on it too. And then that will replace the pump I have here and the radiator that I have here. So we'll see how that goes. That's the project. I can't get over how heavy this thing is. And this isn't wide enough for the pump, so I've got to make a new piece of one of these. All right, I'll do that and get some bolts and be right back at it. All right, I've got this mounted. I had to drill the holes to line them up with the arm, so this will move back and forth on a regular unit. This is a a lathe cnc lathe that i've made as you can see so i've mounted it there so this is a three horsepower so i can hog more wood off and it's a hd 520 carriage so still working on it Thank you. 
I'm going to take this off. It's got a rubber o ring on it. Don't lose that. Fill this. And I'm going to turn the pump on only. Not anything else. So it'll pump the water through. Or the antifreeze through. I live in Michigan, so. If I don't put antifreeze in it, it's bad news rising. It'll freeze in the winter. The 50-50 mix is nice. I use Prestone because it's what I've used for years. All right, so here's my antifreeze. How do I get it in that hole? The first thing I'm gonna do is get the tools and stuff out of the way. I use a turkey baster. It's a little bit longer than a funnel, but that's what I use. I just use a turkey baster. Uh, some people look at the directions it tells you to use a funnel, but uh, what do I know? So this is just filling up the reservoir of the pump. So when I turn it on, it's going to go down because it's got to fill up that, all the lines and the hoses. So let's do that. We'll plug it in. 12 volt power supply that came with the unit. If you look up here, you're looking for that to be moving. It's not moving yet. Sometimes these get airlocked, so you have to take this off and lay it sideways just to get the air the bubbles out of it. Otherwise, you have an airlock and it's a mess. So the water doesn't flow right. Yeah. Flow a little better. bubbles coming out. See them perking up over there. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> because this has cavities in it, you have to purge the system. Like, see how I'm doing it? Up and down. See the air bubbles come out? I don't know whether you can see them or not. I can. You'll hear them over there in a few minutes. Otherwise, you get an airlock in this thing and you don't get any water flow. Okay, so I'll put this back on to the Topped it off. I left a, an air gap there. I don't want to fill it all the way. I notice it goes down. I'll put some more in. And then I put this back in its container or holder so it doesn't leak all over everything. And I wear gloves when I do this because uh, antifreeze really is toxic and it is absorbed through the skin. So you don't want to do that. All right, so there it is. Now I can fire this up and see what it looks like. And I don't want to use the automatic control right now. I just want to do it manually. Let's see if we can do that. Take this off so it doesn't contaminate. So come up. I'm going to hit run, but I'm going to adjust the speed myself if I can. This 
might not let me. We'll find out. If it doesn't, I'll check with next wave and see what they say. So what I did is I checked my version of the software that was in my controller and my um, touchpad. And I had to upgrade all those. Once I upgraded those and ran the new cable to the control box, um, they worked fine. It fired up and does it. It's a little scary because I'm used to doing it manually. I don't let the controller run my VFD normally. But in this operation, it does. And it does a good job. It brings it close to the workpiece, then turns it on, and then uh, initiates the action. That's what the uh, cooling unit looks like. It has a pump and then a little radiator that's attached to that metal plate underneath. Um, it gets warm. I ran it so it got all the way up to 150 degrees, but it's still fine. I guess the uh, VFD drives rated at 170 degrees, so we're the 20 degrees within the tolerance. If it gets any hotter, I'll just add a small radiator in there. Uh, that's my preference. That'll keep it a little cooler. I like to run things a little cooler. I don't want to push the limits too much. But that's what it looks like. Uh, the cover plate goes on. All those go in the cover plate. I'll do that later, and you'll see it. I'm going to cut a couple um, rolling pins, so I'll have those up next. I'm not going to do those today, but I've got some video of it, so you'll see a log turned into a roller pin fairly quickly with this unit. It does a pretty good job. It really can hog off the metal. I went to a half-inch bit because that's what you can use, and it has much wider sweeps on the side, the longer anyway. I went to a three-quarter inch cut, and it's a half-inch shaft, So, and it just, I mean, it just hogs off the material. Um, so it does a pretty good job. I'll keep you posted, having fun and testing out new stuff. So you take care and have a great day, and remember to have fun with your CNC.